Welcome to Fayetteville Community Church. We welcome our church family and our visiting friends. Thank you for coming to worship with us. To find out more about our church, upcoming events, and other church activities, you may visit us online at www.fccnc.us. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Thank you, Eric. You're welcome. You take, I love you. love you too. That is one of my favorite scriptures, and it's a powerful scripture. There are a lot of things that I could say today about my physical condition or whatever. Most of you know, some of you, most of you know more than I do about it, and, 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 that's, and that's quite all right. I, 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 don't, I don't mind that, but I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about what the Lord Jesus has placed on my heart. I believe that we are living in really, really terrible, treacherous times right now. With all the things that are going on, I think all of you know that the things that are going on are not good in this country. But there are some things that are good. And those things that are good are the things that relate to God's people that still know how to pray. And we got to keep that in mind with the top topic of this message, piercing the darkness through prayer. <clears throat> now, I want to tell you some things today, and, and I believe it'll bless you if you will, if you'll take it to heart. America is at war, and the victor goes the prize of our children's children, the little ones. Hear me, war of light and darkness, Christ and Antichrist. You've heard a lot of these things. There will be winners and there will be losers. And there, there's one phrase that I have heard so many times, and it's secular humanism, principles of secular humanism. Hear me good now. They are forged now in the halls of Congress in our country. And those things will destroy this nation as we know it unless the righteous stand up and put on the whole armor of God and pierce the darkness with prayer. That's our job, is to pierce the darkness with prayer. Give the Lord a hand today for the praying people. Hallelujah. Now, I want to tell you something. Prayer, prayer is warfare. It's fighting the battle. There is no compromise with the world or the flesh or the devil. James 4 says, a friend of the world is an enemy of God. You can't be on both sides. You got to make up your mind which side you're going to be on. Make up your mind today to be a person of prayer. I challenge you. We'll, we'll, we'll be looking at the scriptures in our text today, and I want to show you some points in this text that I have we have already, that Erica has already read to you. And we're going to be looking at those, if you will, 
if you'll stay with me. God is a good God today, isn't he? Yes, he is. Now, listen, Paul in 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5 and verse 8, he talks about three little, three words. And there's one is salvation, one is of, and the other is hope. Salvation of hope. Now, let me tell you, hope is not an illusion. Don't ever think that hope is an illusion. Not like the secular world that says, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. You've heard that over and over and over again. Hope equals blessed assurance if you're a child of God. That good things are going to happen to me based on the promises that are in God's word. Good things are going to happen to me. How many of you got good things happening to you? I don't hope I'm saved. No, I don't hope I'm saved. I know that there are some churches that preach you can't know you're saved until you step into eternity. Not the Word of God. I know by the power of the Word of God that I am saved, and I'm not ashamed to let the world know about it. Are you? Now, these things, he says in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. How many of you believe on the name of the Son of God today? That you may know, watch this, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe, hear me, on the name of the Son of God. Now, I don't hope I'm saved. Come on now. I don't hope I'm saved. I know based on what I just read and what the Word of God says, I know that I'm saved. And when I die, hear me, listen to me, when I die, don't spend one dime trying to pray me out of purgatory or somewhere (laughs) because I'm not going there. I don't intend to go there. My last breath here will be my first breath there in the presence of God. And that's where I'm going. Isaiah, hear me, Isaiah 53, verses 4 and 5, it says, with his stripes, we or I, you can say I or we, I am what? Healed. Healed. Everybody say healed. 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 Psalm 103, verse 3 says, I am the Lord God that healeth what? Your diseases. How many of you have prayed to God that he would heal a disease that you've had or that somebody else has had? That's exactly what the word of God says. Hear me. What Jesus has done, he can do it here again. What he has done, he will do it again. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he will never, never change. John, John in one, in John chapter 14 and verse 3, he says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'm going to do what? I'm going to come again and I'll receive you unto myself. Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We shall not all die. We shall not all be dead. But we shall, some of us, be changed from the bodies that we're in right now into the glorious body that he is preparing for us. I tell you, there's going to be a meeting in the air one of these days in the sweet, sweet by and by when Jesus returns in power. Whether you're ready or not, Jesus is coming. But I'm challenging you today to be ready. It's going to take my physical restraint. Yes, it is every bit of my physical restraint to keep from saying, folks, I told you so. Let me tell you something. We'll probably be telling some of them that. Hope, hope, hope. Everybody say the word hope. Hope. Hope protects your mind. Did you know that? Satan sees you walking down a dusty road. He fills your mind with fear and doubt and depression and insecurity. But when you're armed and you're filled, Satan throws his fiery darts You have on the whole armor of God and you are protected by supernatural power of God and he cannot reach you. You can get to that point if you'll do it. Let's go a little further in this sixth chapter, verse 14, where it talks about the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness means right living. How many of you want to live right? My God said, without holiness, no man is going to see the Lord. Now, I, 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 
I'm going to hit on some things here that, that may be controversial, but you'll just have to swallow it. <laughs> I don't wonder about God's position on abortion. Come on. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19 says that there are six things that God hates, and one of them is hands that shed innocent blood. Come on now. The Word of God has got a word for everything that goes wrong. Proverbs 14, verse 12 says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There are many people, many people preaching many gospels, but only one will save you, and that is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said in Romans 1 and verse number 16, he said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now let's go further. Talking about your feet now. We've talked about the breastplate. Let's talk about the feet. Your feet shod in the 15th verse of the 6th chapter. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now, I want to talk about peace between God and man. From Eden... To the crest of Calvary, God and man were at war. At Calvary, watch this now, Jesus took the sinful hand of man and the holy hand of God and put them together and he said, it is finished. It is finished. First John, we read that a few minutes ago. I'm going to tell you some things now that will bless your heart if you'll just hang in there. Pain and the penalty of sin was paid when Jesus said, it is finished. Because of that, I can now say, God is on my side. How many of you will say it with me? God is on my side. In every crisis, I can say the battle has been won because God is on my side. Say it again. God is on my side. When depression begins to settle in and worries and problems begin to come in, when accusers rise up against you and the wicked people begin to surround you and try to eat your flesh, you have something that's called the shield of faith. Paul says... In Ephesians 6, verse 16, he says, Above all things, take the shield of faith. The shield of faith stops all the fiery darts of the devil. Think about it. The shield of faith stops the fiery darts of the devil. All of them. Why? Jesus didn't win a partial victory. Huh? He won total victory. Come on now. Christ is totally the Lord. I, I have learned that the hard way. How many of you know, uh, know what I'm talking about? When you're walking down the road of life and you're ambushed, get behind the shield of faith, honey. Come on. You'll be preserved by the mighty power of the hand of God if you'll get behind the shield of faith. And we go on to the 17th verse where it talks about the sword of the Spirit of God, which is the Word of God, the light of God. That's what the word is, light of God leading humanity to the cross of Christ. We need to be preaching the cross of Christ. You don't hear that preached a whole lot nowadays. Bread of life is what we need to preach that satisfies the heart and the soul. Living water that refreshes you. to drink. It's in this. It's right in there. It's stronger than cocaine. It's stronger than lust. It's stronger than greed. It's stronger than pornography. It can pull down secular humanism. It was the word of God that founded this nation that you and I are living in. And it is the only message that is going to preserve this nation is the word of God. And when you begin to get that inside of you, getting back to the word, the Bible, hear me, in America and the church, the Bible in America and in the church is the only hope of this nation we need to be piercing, as Erica read. We need to be piercing the darkness with prayer. That's Ephesians 6, verse 18. Prayer is the key to God's storehouse of grace and power. Hear me, folks. All that God is and has 
is available to those who pray. And I'm thankful that we got prayers in here today. The disciples said, Lord, teach us how to pray. There's a right way and a wrong way. How do you pray? By lighting a bunch of candles? Come on. A father invited his boss man over to Sunday lunch to his house. And there was no air conditioning in the house. And the father was trying to impress the boss. He asked his 12-year-old son to pray. And father said, son, pray. And son said, I don't know what to say. And the father said, sure you do. Just say what you heard me say. <laughs> he said, dear Lord, why in heaven's name did I ever invite these people over to our house on a hot day like this? <laughs> Have you ever been there? I love children, don't you? I tell you, that they'll fix you every time. They'll tell you more in 30 seconds th than parents can in 30 days. Like, Daddy slept on the couch last night. <laughs> Prayer is laying hold of God's will. Come on now. Find out what God wants and pray for that and you'll get it. Think about that. Prayer is not sending God to do your errands. Prayer is submitting to the purposes of God. Prayer produces boldness. Right then and there, prayer produces boldness. And I'm telling you, we need boldness in the church today. There's, if there's ever been a time that we need boldness, it is now. Paul said in Ephesians 6, 19, and for me, he said that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Now, Paul had the boldness of a lion. Now watch this. Their, y'all pardon me now, their problems sometimes in the pulpits of our country. Watered down gospel. People who can't find it are not finding redemption. They're not finding forgiveness of their sins, much less healing. We, I know what healing is, brother. God brought me from the jaws of death. We need to preach heaven beautiful and hell hot. We need to stand up and preach a gospel that will save America. We've got the brains to do it. We need to do it with everything that we are and everything that we can. Prayerlessness, say it with me, prayerlessness is sin. Prayerlessness is sin. Remember that. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 12, verse 23, it says, Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord. Watch this. In ceasing to pray. In other words, he's saying it's a sin not to pray. But I will teach you the good and the right way, he says. And Jesus said, when you pray, not if you pray. Paul said, pray without ceasing. Come on now. Folks, let me tell you something. We need to pray more. Prayer brings great and mighty things from God. And we need to do more of that. I'm learning that more and more every day. America is waiting for the church to pray. Why are we not praying like we ought to pray? We'll have a great and mighty things begin to happen when the power of God begins to be manifested only because we pray. When the church becomes supernatural again, young people will stop looking for Satanism and witchcraft and begin to learn from their parents that know the Lord how to pray. And we need to pray more. When people walk the aisles of churches to be saved, when their dead marriages come back to life again, when sons and daughters coming off of alcohol and drugs, then power will be released and turn loose on God's people in this nation and we'll be a nation under God because we've learned how to pray. God is a good God. God cannot answer prayers until they're prayed. And he won't answer prayers until they're prayed. 
Hallelujah. Piercing the darkness through prayer. That's what we're talking about today. Prayer releases God's power into your life. Do you need God's power released into your life? Sure you do. Prayer will release God's power into your life. Prayerless Christian equals powerless Christian. Prayerless Christians equal powerless Christians. Prayer is the secret to power with God. Daniel to the lions said, why? His prayer life terrorized the bureaucrats of Babylon. He pierced the darkness with prayer. That's the topic of this message, piercing the darkness with prayer. Elijah prayed, and what do you think happened? Fire fell from heaven when Elijah prayed. Prayer won't be boring. I'm going to read a, read a scripture for you. In the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 31, it says, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken. You ever been in a place, in a meeting like that? I have. I've been in meetings where the house began to shake whenever we prayed. Where there were, you see, he says, where, And when they prayed, the place was shaken, where they were assembled together. And they were all, everybody say all. all. They were all filled with what? The Holy, the Holy Ghost. I can quit right there. If this whole crowd, buddy, was so full of the Holy Ghost that they could all pray in one mind and one accord, you'd see the lid come off of something. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> because God's people would turn loose and begin to pray. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with what? Boldness. Moses prayed, hands up. Israel won the war. Hands down, what do you think? Israel lost the war. The point is, what you do on the ground in prayer is what God can do in the heavens for you. Come on now. Stop praying and you stop God from releasing power. Piercing the darkness through prayer. That's the topic of this message. A sign in the school. In case of nuclear attack, Supreme Court's ban on prayer in school will be temporarily suspended. <laughs> Why pray? To tap into the supernatural world. Listen, if, if you're not trying to tap into the supernatural world, you're not praying. You've got to do it. No matter how brilliant you are, you are playing in a sand pile compared to the genius of God. You can pray with supernatural knowledge when you have a relationship with God. Answered prayer. It's not just a miracle. It's a law. Example. Ice freezes at what? 32? When you meet God's conditions in prayer, you'll get an answer. It's the only thing that can happen. If you shall seek, John 14, 14, if you shall seek anything in my name, he said, I will do it. Matthew 7, verse 8 says, For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be open. You see, that means that prayer is a law of God. Prayer is not heaven's let's make a deal. There are always three answers. One is yes, the other is no, and the other is wait. Two of them we don't want to hear. We want instant everything. Are we guilty of that? Yes, we are. Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. How many, you don't have to raise your hand for this, but how many of you in this room are waiting for God to do something in your life? 
I'm telling you, many of you are. He says, if you'll wait and keep praying, you'll mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Matthew eleven fifteen says, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. You see, you can choose to hear. Some people call on the telephone and they yak, 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 yak. Right? <laughs> you ain't going to tell on nobody, are you? And then they hang up. Did you know that's how folks pray sometimes? God says, I want to talk back to you. Pray and then listen to what God wants to tell you because he wants to talk to you. Now, let's look just for a moment at things that hinder prayer. The first one is unbelief. In Hebrews 11, verse number 6, it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he what? Is. And that he is a rewarder of those that do what? Diligently seek him. Sin in your life hinders prayer. Now watch this. Unforgiveness hinders prayer. Jesus said in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our debts, our trespasses, as we forgive our debtors. Those, our, our debtors are those who trespass against us. Conditions for God's answered prayer. The law of asking is ask and you shall receive. Verbalize your request when you talk to God. Speak it in Genesis. And God said, and God said, God created Adam. And Adam said, God said, and God said. God created Eve. And Eve said, and said, and said, and said, and said. <laughs> and said. <laughs> Boy, he said, mother was with him to the bitter end. You know, God gets angels ready to work on your behalf when you get on your knees and pray and talk to God. Ask God for the greater blessing. Don't just ask him for the things you can do yourself. A king went riding through the kingdom with his entourage one day and he met a peasant and the king said, what would you like to have? And the peasant said, I'd like to have your horse. The king denied him his horse. He said, what's the second thing? He said, I'd like to have your house. And the king denied him his house. The third thing, the peasant said, I'd like your horse, your ca castle, and half of everything you own. And the king said, you got it. Now that tells me something. And his aides around him said, why did you ask for all of that? The king said, I'm tired of such small things. Folks, we serve a big God. I'm delighted to give to someone with that much vision. And that's what God wants to do for you and me today. Do you need healing today? If you do, the doctor says you can get it. The Bible says ask and you shall receive. Do you need supernatural power of heaven to break and destroy the yoke binding your children? If you do, ask and you shall receive. Do you need peace? that passes understanding, ask and you shall receive. Do you need the stain of sin removed from your life? Ask. Do you want America to come back to God? Ask. Ask according to the will of God. God's will is consistent with his word. Know his will by reading his word. Let me show you a few things that God is just for a moment. 
God is light. He's against darkness, the occult. God is life. I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. God is pro-life. God is peace. He opposes fear, manipulation, intimidation, domination, torment. He wants you to have peace. God is love. He opposes bitterness. He opposes racial strife. Cities don't need government grants. They need to experience the love of God and become one in the spirit. And I say that's the same thing for the church. God is forgiving. If you don't forgive, you're out of the will of God. Are you hearing me? God is merciful. Let Israel now say that his mercy does what? Endures how long? Forever. In the book of Matthew, we read a, a, a a favorite scripture in Matthew 21, verse 21. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If you have faith and you doubt not, you shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. What's the next words? It shall be done. Everybody say it. It shall be done. Pray specifically. Know what you want to pray for and pray for that. So specifically that when God answers, you'll know it was God and it was not just random chance. Folks, it's time to flood the gates that the devil has put up with the prayers of Christian people that love the Lord. Pray specifically. Know what you want to pray for so specifically that when God answers, you will know it was God and it was not just random chance. Please remember that. A man wanted to get married and he put an ad in a newspaper. Wanted one good woman. He knew what he wanted. She must be able to clean, cook, sew, dig worms and clean fish. She must have a motor and a boat. Please send a picture of the boat and the motor. <laughs> he knew what he wanted, and he was going to get it. Now, you've got to know what you want. And if you know what you want, then you know how to pray for it. Pray with power. Pray of binding and loosing agreement with two or three people. Get somebody to agree with them. In Matthew 18, verse 18 through 20, it says, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever you shall say on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That means God's going to help you with it, don't he? Again, I say to you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done of them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Now, a lot of people, let me tell you, are waiting for God to take action. God is waiting for us to take action. He's waiting for us to do that because he says where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'll be there with them. Why did God give us this power? Because we need it. I'm going to tell you from my heart, we need his power. Satan is out to steal, kill, and destroy. Steal, kill and destroy. And the only way to control the supernatural powers of darkness is to put on the whole armor of God and pray and pierce that darkness with prayer. Open up the gates of heaven by your prayer. And folks, look, attack sickness the same way. Lord Jesus, by the power of your name, and the shed blood of your cross, I loose my son, my daughter, my brother, my sister, my children, my grandchildren. Jesus went to the grave of Lazarus. And when he had thus spoken, the word says in John eleven forty three and 44, when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice and said, what did he say? Lazarus, come forth. 
Is that right? <clears throat> and he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus saith unto them, Loose him and let him go. That's the way you pray. Now many of you have families that are bound by drugs, alcohol, fornication, bitterness, resentment, prejudices, idolatry. Maybe some are bound by Satanism or witchcraft, the occult, or maybe mind control. This is what you got to say. In the name of Jesus and by the power of the word of God and the blood of Jesus, loose them in Jesus' name. You say, I can't say that. Agree with another believer if you have a hard time saying it. Put on the whole armor of God and take our churches back that have strayed away into something that they don't even know what's going on in their lives. I want Fayetteville Community Church to know what's going on in our lives. And I want us to be ready for whatever comes. We're in the process of building a huge building you see some work going on out in the field. And we're expecting God to bless all of you so that we can bless the folks that are building that building and pay them for building it and buy the materials. And we're going to do that because God said he'd supply every need that we had. Are you with me? I thank God today that we can agree together, one with another today, to put on the whole armor of God and take back from the devil, what he has stolen from us in the name of Jesus. Will you stand with me? There's a great day coming. A great day coming by and by. The word says, of that song says, saints and sinners will be parted right and left. There's a great day coming. Their loved ones that you have that may be still living in sin and you don't want to leave them. It's time that we pray piercing the darkness so the power of God can move into the lives of those that we love and those that we're praying for. Amen? So I want you to bow your heads with me just a moment. And I don't mean for you to bow your head and try, and try to keep from being seen or do something that you're not supposed to do. I want you just to bow your head and pray. Father, I come to you right now with this congregation of people. And Lord, if there's one person or two or very many in this crowd that does not know you, Lord, I pray that things will begin to happen right now in their lives and they'll walk into this aisle. Lord, I pray if there are those that are sick in body and those that have people that are sick in body, and they need to pray for them, I pray that they will line this altar. They'll step out from where they are right now and come and stand and let's pray a prayer, a prayer of oneness together in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. May you bring your needs to the altar right now if you have a need. God will bless you. He will bless you. He said he would answer those prayers. He said he would do it for you. It's time for you to get done. Get it done. Pray and believe, he said, and he'll answer your prayers. Yes, I see you coming. God knows what your needs are. He knows what your needs are. Praise the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Folks in the audience, don't stop praying. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to ask James to go from one side to the other to those that are praying and anoint them with oil in the name of Jesus and pray the prayer 
God said that I, that's what he would do, that he would heal. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I'll go this way. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, you know what our needs are. In Jesus' name. Come on closer, buddy. Oh, praise God. How old are you, son? 20. God bless you, buddy. In Jesus' name, God knows what your needs are. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. We thank you, Lord, that one day, one day, you answered our prayers, and we thank you for it. And this is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, Father, and I thank you for it. I praise you, Lord, for what's going on at this altar. There are things going on in the hearts and in the minds of these people at the altar, things that the enemy is trying to destroy. But, devil, I tell you, you cannot do it. It is not you. You cannot do it. In Jesus' name, I pray for these, Lord, who have come to this place today to be prayed for. I thank you, Father, that you have blessed them, and I thank you that you're not through blessing them today. Father, in Jesus' name, let sickness be gone. Let hate and bitterness and things that the enemy has brought upon them, let it be gone in the name of Jesus. Father, help us. Thank you.